Thanks today. September, along the fishing banks off the coast of South Carolina. A good time and a good place for catching fish. The crew of the dragger Dante know well that if you don't mind hard work and long hours, you can earn a good day's pay out here. Maybe we throw the hog today, Captain? You're dreaming. We got three, four days out yet. Come on, let's get those fish in. Another three or four days, if the weather holds. September can bring calm and sunny weather to these waters. It can also bring death and destruction. Within the next 48 hours, this tiny fishing vessel will experience the full horrors of perhaps nature's most terrifying natural disaster. Several days ago, off the coast of Africa, a small event took place. A common thing that would be insignificant in most times and places, but not here. It began simply as an area of low pressure. But in this part of the world, between June and November, these innocent low pressure areas are known as weather breeders. As air moves into the low pressure spot to fill a vacuum, it begins to spin as the earth turns on its axis. Little by little, over a period of days, the spin gathers intensity. The winds grow stronger. The storm area grows larger. The center becomes tighter, more violent. As the winds top 74 miles per hour, the storm becomes a hurricane. Men of the sea have fished these waters since the days of the first settlers and always they have lived in fear of being overtaken by the ravaging surprises of nature, by the hurricanes born in the tropics, far out of sight in the Atlantic, or in the Caribbean, or the Gulf of Mexico. Throughout man's history, these giant storms have arrived with little warning, and more frequently, as deadly surprises. We can't stop hurricanes. But now we can at least be forewarned more quickly and accurately, and hopefully better prepared. Since 1960, weather satellites have given us the ability to observe and track a hurricane from the time of its birth, predict its course, and sound a life-saving warning. These satellites, developed and launched by NASA and operated by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, NOAA, feed back vital data that can be incorporated into forecasts and warnings. The space age has enabled us to witness what no man has ever before seen, the development of a tropical storm and its growth into a hurricane. NOAA National Hurricane Center Marine Advisory Number 24. Storm Mimi, change gale warnings to hurricane warnings from Marathon to Vero Beach. Gale warnings and a hurricane watch remain in effect. Some reports this morning indicate that Mimi strengthened during the night and has become a full hurricane. Highest sustained winds near the center are 90 miles per hour with gusts to 110. At 6 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, Hurricane Mimi was located by satellite pictures, coastal radar, and reconnaissance aircraft near latitude 24 degrees north, longitude 79 degrees west. It is moving northwest at 10 miles per hour and is expected to reach the coast early tonight. It is a frightening and wrenching experience to flee an approaching hurricane. Nothing can make this any easier. However, modern technology makes early warning possible and has helped save many thousands of lives. Station 8, calling the Dante. Can you hear me call? 
But Danny is standing by. Paul, everybody here saying hockey. You coming in? No hurricane here. Storm's hitting to the south. We're staying out. You sure you're out of the way? No, she ain't coming this way. You do the cooking. I'll do the fishing. Kids need me. I gotta go now. I'm off, Paul. Mimi slams the shore with unladylike violence. The water rises in a storm surge, a wind-driven tide of rapid flooding. It will account for nine out of every ten hurricane deaths. Every now and then, a tornado with even stronger winds will leap off from the advancing storm front and lash havoc across the landscape. The eye of the hurricane, a deceiving low with gentle winds and almost clear skies. Suddenly the full fury begins again, with winds now howling from exactly the opposite direction, sending objects flying like toy airplanes. Yet the hurricane's cruel energy is being spent. As long as it remains over land, no longer able to draw power from the warmth and moisture of the ocean, the storm will slowly die. But Mimi has some tricks left. Instead of dying over the land, she veers back again to sea. She leaves behind a battlefield of aching memories. For fishermen like the crew of the Dante, Mimi is still a threat, even as it passes far to the south of them. For the path of a hurricane is erratic, forever uncertain. It must be constantly watched. NOAA National Hurricane Santa Marine Advisory Number 32, Hurricane Mimi. Gale warnings and hurricane watch are in effect from Charleston to Cape Hatteras. Satellite pictures and reconnaissance reports confirm that Hurricane Mimi has veered during the night and now poses a serious threat to the Carolina coast. The danger that has been distant and remote now comes closer to the men of the Dante. The storm has veered back toward them. The warning gives them no time to lose. They must cut away their precious nets and make a dash to the north, their only hope of survival. In spite of advance warnings, there are always some who foolishly stay behind. It just came down through this area, just like an ocean wave, more or less. And it, these people right in here, they just didn't have a chance and just took every, all these houses through here. Was anyone living in the house? Yes, we lived uh, 
Uh, Oliver Bow and his wife and two little children. The little children, they got drowned. And my house was under 12 feet of water. And I've seen about all my family has had destruction of their homes. And, it, and we... And I've never, I hope I never see nothing like this again. I might have young, but it, it takes this hard blow. It's bound to be in here somewhere because all these are the houses that came from in this vicinity. They're all right in here in this neighborhood. But mine was right on the corner, not on even for some the tragedy has been immediate for others it is a time of suspense we're all right thank God, but my husband's out fishing. The storm came right through him before it hit shore, and I can't get him on the radio. All I can do is pray he heard the weather report and got out of there. All I can do is pray. The rising sun finds the Dante fishing her way toward home. The storm has died. Its fearful winds dissipated at last, many miles inland. The fishermen, through careful sailing, escaped the storm last night, just barely. Calling Station 8. The Dante is calling Station 8. Station 8. Carl, you all right? Sure, I couldn't get you before. I had to run to the east. We're fishing again now. One more drag and we come in. Here for supper? Sure, as soon as we unload. The Dante is off. Last night he had all he could do to keep the Dante from swamping. But now that the storm has passed, the captain has time to think. To think about modern technology, ship-to-shore communication, and Earth satellites. Especially about weather satellites, which far above his tiny vessel, in the blackness of outer space, helped him and thousands of others on land escape from the horrors of the hurricane below. I hope everybody in town sort of takes it on the chin and starts all over again. It's going to be tough. I don't know whether everybody can afford it or not, but I'm going to give it a whirl. Everyone seems to be in high spirits. Why is that? I don't know. But there's one thing for sure. We will re we'll rebuild. Yeah. We've got a beautiful country down here. We'll make it beautiful again. Yeah.